What's going on, Fight Fans? This is Sean with Boxing Socials Other Sports here with my man Tuffy. He's back again. Y'all been asking for it. Y'all enjoy the stories. Let me tell you something. Tuffy has stories for days. He, he's nowhere <laughs> close to being done with his whole life story. We're just tapping into the beginning of it. How's it going today, Tuffy? Very good. Very good. Very good. I want to give a shout out to None So Strong. Uh, there it is. None So that? Strong. Yep. There we go. There we go. Um, t- tell me about this. So I see a lot of your your Instagram, Twitter. Uh, you you put a lot of none so strong. What's the meaning behind that, and how did you come up with that, or is that even yours? Yes, yeah, my <laughs> it's mine by default. By uh, default, okay, break that down. Actually, uh, the biggest this is a great story. Actually, the biggest, strongest, most resolute person I ever met. Mm-hmm. Um, he was a guy named uh, Too Tall. He was six foot. He was like six foot seven. Yeah. Two twenty five. All muscle. I mean, he had the shoulders like Goldberg, the little yeah. muscle right here, or Holyfield. Yeah. And, and I mean, his chest. I mean, he had like a twelve pack V shaped back. I mean, man. He and he was tall, but he didn't weigh that much. He's too, like, too tall. Yeah, yeah. He from Kansas City. Shout out too tall. Yeah, you watching this? But uh, so so okay. This is how it happened. For I went to prison once, uh-huh. and only once. Yeah, <laughs> I'm scared straight. I ain't did yeah. nothing wrong since. But yeah. it, but uh, so when I was in there, I didn't know that people uh people separate. Based on location, they like the Texas people hang uh, with the Texas little crew. And got you. This guy actually was in the little Kansas City because I was in prison in Oklahoma City. Mm. So, uh, and they only talk to, I mean, just like the Crips, the Bloods, mm-hmm. the mm-hmm. Aryan Brotherhood, right. uh, the Mexican, the MS, all of them. So, whoever, whatever sets they got or however they separate, they only talk to they people, you know, basically. Mm, okay. So, um, I'm I was actually in my own head. I was actually a pioneer in prison because I was one of the people that I wasn't in no gangs, right. I wasn't in no crews, mm-hmm. and and I basically made friends and talked to everybody. Mm. And I was the only one. I mean, you can check this that that had a Mexican celly. Cause you know it's it's by race too. Darn. So it's by location, it's by gang, it's by race. It's the blacks, the whites, the Mexicans, so and then you, the so Indians. You, so do you think the um, what do you call them, correction officers? Do CEOs. You, the CEOs. Do you think they were purposely trying to put you in there with the Mexican to see what would happen? No, 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 no. I no, I did that. Oh, but CEOs do do that, right? To some people to sell. Oh them yeah, up. yeah, yeah, yeah. The the uh. uh they tried to get me killed when I first went to prison. What? When I first, I mean, I was still in Houston, downtown in the uh, the holding facility. The, the, yeah. Because I went to the federal prison. Darn. And it's a big difference between the feds, the state, you know what So I mean? your time came through the feds. My time was in the feds. So let me ask you, is it true, I always hear about the feds, <laughs> they have like a 98, 99% conviction rating. That's definitely true. So when they get you, they have <laughs> yeah, when, everything yeah, all the evidence feds, lined up. Yeah, when the feds when the feds come when the feds come get you, they already got you, basically. They don't come until they have you. So that's why they got a ninety eight percent conviction rate. Oh. So they they will sit there and watch you, and 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 allow you to do illegal things. For years and years and years, building the case. So they're in it for the long game, not a, not a quick bust. They don't want the quick bust because they want to see. Okay, if you're a drug dealer, then they want to know. The they're gonna watch you sell drugs and then see who you connected to, who you selling, and try to find them and see who they connected to and try to work their way up to the big fish. Wow, that's what they try to do. Do and you know if they wiretapped you? Oh yeah. Definitely, I got the I got a recording of the tape. Yeah, they wiretapped me and everything. So it was it was it was it was. Looking back, 
it was amazing that I naturally did things that uh, prevented them from getting me for a long girl time. Wow. Because a lot of little nuances and idiosyncrasies that I have, it actually allowed me to evade them without even knowing. It's like if you do certain, if you move a certain way, if you always conduct yourself in a certain way, it's a lot of ways you can safeguard yourself from certain um, traps and distractions and danger, actually. So, Tuffy, let me, let me ask you this, because we're going to get to part how the CEO set you up. But your story, did it resonate with you? Now, I, I listen, me and Tuffy haven't talked about this, but I know you've seen The Wire on HBO. Oh, I look. What? So, when you oh, saw baby. that, did some of it reminisce or bring, you know, thoughts back to remember, like, man, you know, All I was it. trying to be elusive like this. And All we it. had certain, what were they trying to do? Some kind of clock or time or something they were doing. What's something in The Wire that kind of resonate with uh, what you were tied up in? All of it. Really? <laughs> All of it. All of it. Only thing different is that on the East Coast in Baltimore, they have more of the uh, the high rises in the projects, mm. and they actually have those in New Orleans. Almost, but got. but Tuffy, let's uh, think back. From if I remember the wire correctly, they had illegal wire taps though. Yeah, I don't think they were. Yeah, they're illegal. Yeah, <laughs> but and yours was legal. That you yeah, know yeah, of. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Mine was legal because they did a something on me called a controlled purchase. And what a controlled purchase is, is the, they give the undercover agents money to go purchase drugs. And then once they purchase the drugs, they don't arrest you. They let mm. you go. And you figure like you just made a regular sale. Yeah, yeah. They take that back to the judge and that gives them the probable cause for the wire, for the arrest, the uh, re- you know that so they take it's called a controlled purchase. So they use their mark money, they 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 picture the money, they go make a purchase from you. You go, nothing happened. They take it back. They take the product back and the pictures of the money that they gave you. Show it to the judge. That gives them the warrant, and now they can tap you and follow you and do all that. And everything, because wow. they said, this is the money, this is what he got, this shows that he has it, now nah, let us do this, this, and that. And so, then. so Tuffy, um, I don't know if you know Greg Kading. He was the officer that was kind of behind the whole Keefe D thing and Tupac shooting in Orlando and all that. Mm-hmm. And he was describing as a cop, being an undercover cop, he had informants. And he said, sometimes we pay informants out of our own pocket, $50, $100, take him out to eat, get the information. Um, in your situation, was there informants that was planted that you didn't know about? No, uh, they were actually very good friends of mine that that uh, that became informants. And the 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 reason how they do that is, um, they catch them. They might catch a guy on a drug deal mm-hmm. or on a murder or on right. something. Right. Something totally that that doesn't have anything to do with, with you. With your operation. And then the guy gets so scared when they get him, they like, well, you want to reduce your time? What you got? Who you know? Mm. What you can do? You want to go home? You give me somebody bigger than you, we'll make this go away. Yeah. They tell them things like that. And uh, the guy that, um, that, that I knew, he was from Waco, um... So, subsequently, I called him Waco. I actually don't even know the guy's real <laughs> yeah, name. Yeah. So when he called me, what's up, Waco? Waco, what's up? Oh, what's up, my homeboy Waco? All right, all right, Waco, I'm gonna hit you. Yeah. So like that. Yeah. So I called him Waco, uh-huh. and I didn't know his name. Yeah. And then he called me H Time. All right. So he didn't know my name. Oh wow. So the whole thing is, I was H Time, he was Waco. 